Despite continuing to receive zero production from their second highest paid player in Ben Simmons, and despite veterans like Tobias Harris and Danny Green being inconsistent with their shots, the Philadelphia 76ers still managed to post the fourth best record in the entire NBA since the month of December began, while also currently sitting just two and a half games away from the top seed in the Eastern Conference. And without a doubt, a huge reason for all of these is that their 7-foot star center, Joel Embiid, is currently playing the best basketball of his career. After finishing second in MVP voting and after averaging 28 points and 10 and a half rebounds with a ridiculous 63% true shooting percentage in 11 playoff games last 2021, this season, Embiid is back on the floor looking like a much more improved version of himself. As after returning from health protocols early in the season, the guy has been on a total tier. Since the month of December began, Embiid has been averaging more than 31 points, almost 11 rebounds, more than 4 assists, more than a block, and more than a steal per game. But What's even more impressive is that he's been putting up his numbers with eye-popping efficiency. As for the season, Embiid is sporting a scorching 61.2 true shooting percentage despite also posting a league best 36.5 usage rate which combination of usage and efficiency for a whole season has only been topped by prime James Harden from 2018 to 2020. But while he might not be getting the most attention from NBA fans this season, one thing is for sure and that is Joel Embiid has truly evolved into a do-it-all superstar who has elevated his game to a whole nother level and who's once again asserting himself into the thick of the MVP discussion for the second consecutive season. And in this video, we'll break down how exactly Joel Embiid is doing that. So what's good guys, it's Rero Balls here again and as always, if you guys happen to enjoy these types of content, please make sure to hit that like button or click that subscribe button to show your support for the channel. It only takes a second of your time but it would be much appreciated. So let's get to it. First things first, I really think that the most evident growth in Joel Embiid's game this season can be found in his much improved composure and control on offense when he has the ball in his hands, which is mostly reflected in his playmaking. Well, let this sink in for a second. This season, Embiid is assisting on 24.4% of Philadelphia's total field goals. That assist percentage is not only a career high for him, but it's also an 8% increase from his assist rate in 2021. But most importantly, Embiid has been putting up such improved assist percentages while also currently sporting a career low 11.1 .1 turnover percentage. That makes this season Embiid's best one in terms of assist to turnover efficiency. And when you watch him play, you'll easily see how these numbers translate in his game. Cause for years, Embiid has been capable of whirling skip passes from the post all the way to corner shooters. And yet, he was still prone to indecision with the ball when facing double teams in the interior. While this season, his skip passes from the post are still there, but Embiid has also been diversifying his playmaking reads on the floor, as he's just become an exceptionally high-level passing center who's able to organize the Sixers' offense by picking defenses apart with his much-improved feel, which has ultimately contributed to Embiid also averaging a career-high 4.3 assists per game this season. Just like in this clip, with Embiid having the ball in the post, you can see him literally directing traffic on offense while inviting the double team at the same time. This enables him to read the floor and to swing the one-handed pass to Shake Milton on the corner for the open three. Then in here, watch Embiid make a play off a live dribble. First, he backs down Chris Boucher on the post, but then he waits for the triple team to arrive before dishing out the nice wrap around to Thibault on the dunker spot for the easy finish. Overall, I think this kind of playmaking development from Embiid has been one of the main reasons for his rise from all NBA center to MVP caliber superstar dating way back to last season. But aside from that, last season also marks a time wherein Embiid has enjoyed the best mid-range shooting campaign of his career as he shot 47% from the mid-range in 2021, which is something that has helped eclipse questions regarding his offensive versatility. This season though, Embiid's mid-range shooting has been slightly down to just 43.2% but in a way, has even become a more complete and impactful offensive player this season, which I think is because he has been able to offset his mid-range regression with a new way of scanning the floor. Cause without Ben Simmons around, Embiid has been Philly's de facto transition ball handler. After a rebound, he's being trusted to grab and go and just create easy offense. As a result, this season, Embiid dribbles the ball up the floor to start to play an offense an average of 6.9 times per game which is up from his 3.5 per game average last season according to Second Spectrum. That is another career high number for Embiid. Well, everyone knows that for a center, Embiid has nice footwork, great body control, and the requisite hand 
handle to start the fast break. And as expected, most defenders wouldn't want to be an obstacle between the basket and a 7 foot 280 pound big man who's going downhill. Just like here, coming fresh off a rebound, you can see Embiid bringing the ball down court in a very fluid manner, getting past Hassan Whiteside all the way to the rim while the defense is unable to do anything but watch. Again here, coming fresh off another rebound, Embiid again brings the ball down court while surveying the floor. He even pulls a little behind the back dribble but this time, he chooses to go for the nice 16-foot mid-range jumper which leaves his defender totally helpless. But of course, we know that the guy can score in a lot of different more ways, whether it be out of deep seals in the paint, out of touches in the post, or out of the pick and pop. Well, Embiid is still the interior monster that has always been. In fact, he's shooting a career best 77.9% at the rim this season, which is the third most efficient mark in the NBA out of all players to attempt an average of 5 shots per game at the rim. But I think what really deserves more attention is the growth of his pull-up game. As last season, only 18.8% of Embiid's half-court offense came from pull-up jumpers, which was then a career high, but that number is up to an even higher 25.1% this season. And the thing is, he's still producing virtually similar points per possession despite increasing his pull upload significantly as compared to last season. Overall, watching him, you can just see that Embiid has been mastering how to create spaces for his jumpers right in front of his defenders, and you can just see how patient he is when generating offense for himself off the dribble, which is something that he hasn't always been able to do with this much ease before. Just like here, after receiving the ball from the top of the key, Embiid hits Valanciunas with a shot fake, enabling him to drive right into his spot in the paint, then again, he uses another shot fake before pulling up for the nice 15-footer against two defenders. Again here, Embiid initiates his own offense from the perimeter. First, he drives into the paint, he uses a shot fake, then he spins, creating just the right amount of space for him to launch his nice fadeaway mid-range jumper against the tough defense. However, all the offensive growth that Embiid has been displaying seems to be more than just a bonus due to the fact that he already came into the league as one heck of a defensive-oriented big man. Well, he's always been a very good defender, but dating all the way back to 2018, it seemed like Embiid always saved some part of his defensive energy for the playoffs. And while that may still be true, I think Embiid is currently playing the best regular season defense he's played since his rookie year. And between his own defensive growth and 7 games of experience against the notorious Trey Young, John Collins, and Clint Capella lob trio in Atlanta, it looks like Embiid has just refined his overall pick and roll coverage this season. While sure, bouncy lob threat still exposes lack of verticality at times, but I think he's just learned to better engage both ball handlers and roll men in drop coverages. Just like in this clip, watch how Embiid defends the pick and roll. You can see him covering just the right amount of ground within the level of the screen, but as soon as D'Angelo Russell passes the ball to the roll man, Embiid quickly uses his long arms to swipe the ball away from Jared Vanderbilt's hands before he ultimately saves the possession for the Sixers. Here though, Embiid plays it differently. He hedges right into the ball handler, sliding his feet while in the perimeter to make sure James Harden doesn't have an easy driving lane before he eventually meets the beard at the rim with a block. But outside of his pick and roll defense, Embiid has also remained active as a rim protector in general as he continues to make the necessary rotations to change his opponent's shots in the paint. Well, as a rookie, Embiid did register a tremendous 7.7 .7 block percentage, however that came at the expense of him also producing a problematic 6.9 fouls per 100 possessions. This season, although his block rate is down to 3.8% which is the second lowest of his career, his foul rate is also down to 3.9 fouls per 100 possessions which is also the second lowest of his career. In fact, Embiid hasn't even tallied 5 personal fouls in a single game this entire season which is definitely an indication of Embiid's maturity on the defensive end. And I think this is impressive considering that Philadelphia actually owns the 9th best defensive rating in the NBA since the month of December, which as we can see largely stems from Embiid continuing to be a defensive menace while avoiding to commit costly fouls in the process. Just like in this clip, watch Embiid acting as a help defender for a moment, but with the impending lob threat to Capella, he immediately adjusts his position just in time for him to block the big man's floater without committing a foul. Again here, you can see Embiid just standing right at the dunker spot, but as soon as Miles Bridges drives to the rim with a little bit of daylight, Embiid just rises up vertically, changing the guy's shot without even having to go for a block. Well, to be honest,
honest, Embiid's great two-way play for Philly this season isn't even a new trend during his career. In fact, the team has long demanded him to be this good on both ends of the floor. Still, the rate at which he's thriving in such a complex and unfamiliar role without Ben Simmons around is definitely unprecedented for him. All in all, I think this version of Embiid is good enough to go to war against anyone in the playoffs, and so, it's now all up to Daryl Morey and the Sixers front office to get Embiid and company some help for them to be able to fully compete with the best teams in the Eastern Conference when it matters the most. So, how high do you guys rank Joel Embiid in the MVP race so far? Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section below. And again, if you enjoy these types of content, please make sure to consider subscribing to the channel as well. Again, this is Rero Balls, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.